pulled a harmless prank on my girlfriend's family. Now I'm single and facing prison time. Past weekend was the big camping trip that my girlfriend would be taking with her and her family. It would consist of her, her parents, her younger sister, her aunt and uncle, and her three cousins and it was a big family trip that was being planned for cooler weather. My girlfriend told me all about where they would be camping and I decided to take advantage of that knowledge. I visited my girlfriend's house to say goodbye to her and wish her a fun trip and when they all took off in their cars, I got in my car and drove to the campsite that they would be staying at. I know the area pretty well and I was able to find a spot to hide my car from view. I was able to navigate the woods and keep an eye on them while remaining hidden from view. When it came to nighttime, I put on a Chewbacca costume and ruffled it up a little to make it wild and untamed. While the family was gathered around the campfire, I started to rustle the bushes. The family noticed, but they didn't think much of it. Then I started to make growling noises. The family was getting noticeably freaked out and then my girlfriend's uncle started to walk toward where I was hiding. As soon as he got close enough, I jumped out from behind the bushes and started making roaring noises while running around acting like a Bigfoot. I shook their tents, threw lawn chairs around, and chased after some of the cousins. I heard my girlfriend's dad yell get the gun. And that's when I knew I had to end the prank. I took off the costume, revealed myself, and the entire family was pissed. Long story short, I got yelled at by almost all of her family, and the noise attracted the campsite manager, who kicked me out after hearing what happened. Today I heard back from my girlfriend for the first time since the prank and she said that she's seriously considering breaking up with me. First update. Last night, my girlfriend's family was holding a barbecue in their backyard and my girlfriend was able to talk her dad into inviting me. He was originally against the idea of me coming, but he was willing to let me come so long as the first thing I did was offer a genuine apology for the prank that I pulled on all of them. I arrived in their backyard and everybody that I pranked at the campsite was sitting at a table and they were all clearly waiting for me to arrive. I sat down next to my girlfriend and I began my apology. I stated that my prank was ill-timed, immature, and thoughtless and I apologized for ruining their camping trip that they had apparently been planning for some time. I tried to make it as genuine and sincere as possible and when I was done, I waited for some type of response. There was a really long awkward silence as the whole family just stared at me. Then the uncle whispered something in the dad's ear and they both burst out laughing, but I couldn't make out what he said. The dad then said that he didn't accept my apology and then he told me to leave. My initial response was a very loud what the f? And that made things worse. My girlfriend's dad kept telling me to leave and I lost my temper. I swiped an empty plastic cup off of the table and I said to the family fine, f all of you. While flipping them off with both middle fingers. As I was leaving the backyard, my girlfriend caught up to me and said that she was breaking up with me. She said that I was too immature and impulsive and she said that she wanted me to leave her and her family alone. I tried apologizing to her profusely. I kept saying babe, I'm sorry. Just give me another chance and I promise I'll be good. I promise. She then walked off and I did something that made things even worse. I yelled at her calling her a B word and then I started kicking and punching the wooden fence that separates their front and backyard. I knocked down part of the fence and then I left. Second update. She's now my ex-girlfriend. I can't stop thinking about her. I can barely eat, sleep, or do anything that used to make me happy. Last night I watched my first ever hockey game and I was excited about that a few months ago, but now I don't even care. I spent the whole game thinking about my ex and how she broke up with me. She's all I think about right now and I feel like putting in one last effort in making her see that I'm a better man. What should I say to her? What can I do to get her to come back to me? Third update. For those who may or may not know, my girlfriend broke up with me because I pranked her and her family by dressing up as Bigfoot and ruining their camping trip, but I think that since some time has passed, my girlfriend might be of a cooler head and I was thinking of trying to win her back in a clever little way that involves the Bigfoot theme. My idea is to dress up as Bigfoot again, but not to scare anyone. I'm going to dress up, go into her backyard with an old stereo player that still works, and play Sorry by Buckcherry. I'll play it loud enough for her to hear and I'm hoping she'll accept it and see it as a cute apology. I know it sounds a little cliche, the whole stereo outside the window thing, but I'm hoping that the Bigfoot costume might be a new little twist on it and it'll be my way of apologizing for the Bigfoot prank. What do you think? Fourth update. After reading through some of the responses from yesterday, I decided to just go for it and get it over with. I dressed up in the ruffled up Chewbacca costume, grabbed the stereo, and walked over to my girlfriend's house at nighttime. We live in the same neighborhood and there's a shortcut through a little stretch of woods that I take from my place to hers and that's the route I took last night. I climbed into their backyard and I stood in their grass, holding up the stereo while playing the song that I had intended, Sorry by Buckcherry. The problem is that the stereo was an old piece of trash that I dug up from my basement and the volume wasn't loud at all. It sounded muffled and I didn't want to risk moving closer to their house in case I was seen. But I wanted something to come from the night and I set down the stereo and peered into the window that I knew led to my girlfriend's room. My girlfriend was just playing with her phone on her bed and I just stared into her room for a little while. I guess I was caught up in staring at her since I hadn't seen her in a few weeks and I didn't realize that I had been staring in there for a long time. I turned to leave, but I saw one of her neighbors out on their porch, looking directly at me and they were on their phone. My first thought was that they were probably calling the police and I panicked. I did something really stupid and tried to go into my girlfriend's house by pulling at their back green door, but her mom saw me trying to get in and she screamed. I then ran back towards the woods and I tried to pick up the stereo, but I really hurt my back while bending over, so I just left it in their backyard. The back pain was also shooting down my left leg and I had to limp away from the house. I limped through the woods back to my house while also cussing at myself over how effed up my plan was. Fifth update. My ex-girlfriend left me a message on my phone threatening me with a restraining order. It's just a threat at this point, 
but I still want to know what would happen to my record if she were to file one against me. Will it give me a criminal record and officially list me as a stalker? Is it something that appears in a background check? I just want to know how that'll affect things like me getting a job or something like that. Would this affect me nationally, or just in my hometown of Denver, Colorado? Sixth update. I won't go into detail, but I left a stereo of mine at my ex-girlfriend's house and this morning I got a text from her dad. It was a picture of the destroyed stereo next to a baseball bat and the message read that's your head if you come near my house again. I want to know if I can take action against him for this. He destroyed my stereo and threatened to bash my head with a baseball bat. What actions can I take? This is all taking place in Denver, Colorado. Seventh update. I've spent the past few weeks thinking about how I can get back together with my ex-girlfriend, and I've decided to just move on. She doesn't ever want to get back with me and I've caused enough trouble with her family as a whole. I need to get over her and I don't know how. My older brother has a wedding in a few days and it being a romantic occasion is really going to mess with me emotionally, especially since me and my ex were planning on attending together. It hurt even more to see that my ex was selling her dress and posting about it on Facebook. I can't get over the memories and all the time we've spent together and it hurts knowing that I lost her because of my immaturity and stupidity. How do I get over her? She's the only thing on my mind and it has to end. Help me out please. Eighth update. I know that most people have seen my previous posts on here regarding me and the issues with my ex-girlfriend and her father. He's already threatened me violently and as of last night, he's called the cops on me and now I'm awaiting a court date here in Denver, Colorado. Last night was obviously Halloween and while I normally don't trick or treat at my age, I ended up taking my little cousin out around the neighborhood while my parents and hers were at a Halloween party. I also figured that I would wear my Chewbacca costume since I wanted to dress up and I didn't have any other last minute costumes. We walked around our neighborhood for a little while and we ended up on the same block as my ex-girlfriend's house. I knew it was only an inevitability that we would cross her house, but I honestly wasn't worried about it. I figured that her dad may not even be out to see us and all I'm doing is trick or treating. We ended up walking by her house and of course, both of her parents were sitting by their garage with a bowl of candy to hand out. I tried to grab my cousin and make for the opposite direction, but it was too late. I heard my ex's dad yell I see you. And he clearly recognized me. I just grabbed my cousin and we made our way back to my house without looking back at my ex's house. We got home, but almost an hour later, the cops arrived and they told me that my ex's dad wanted to press charges on me for stalking and harassment. I'm currently awaiting a court date and I think this is all BS. I didn't have any premeditated plans to go near their house, nor did I have any intent with their property. I was simply trick or treating with my cousin and we just happened to come across their home. The dad simply acts as if he's king of the block and he can dictate who walks in the area. What can I do to prepare for my court case? What arguments can I make? I wasn't stalking the house last night and I wasn't planning on doing anything. I simply walked by it while trick or treating and the dad threw a fit? What can I do? Ninth update. Last night, my ex texted me and she was clearly drunk. A lot of her texts were either gibberish or in poor grammar, but I could make out what she was communicating. Basically, she was celebrating me having charges pressed against me and she was texting stuff like I hope you rot in jail and lock him up. I responded with texts of my own. I called her bad words, but she didn't seem phased. But simply sending her some mean texts isn't enough for me. I honestly think that she has some nerve to kick me while I'm down and all she has to do is just stay on the sidelines while daddy does all of the work. I've spent all day thinking about how I can get back at her over this. Part of me thinks that I should just wait until I'm done going to court, but I also want to strike back while the event is still fresh. I'm thinking of one final prank. What should I do?